you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to answer this question on your own before listening on. We have an arrangement that contains a continuous charge distribution. There's one of those charge distributions marked Q1 and then another one marked Q2. We know that the electric potential produced by a continuous charge distribution is equal to the following expression. We have a constant multiplied by the integral of dq divided by r. Now, it's worth noting that every point along both charge distributions, we can mark a few such points here and a couple over here, every single one of those points lies the same distance away from point C. So for example, this distance right here is the same as this distance right here, which is the same as this distance right here, and so on. Essentially, those distances are the radii of this circle right here. And because the distance is a constant, that means that we can factor it out of the integral. And then we're left with the relatively simple integral of dq, which is basically the total charge present along that continuous charge distribution. In other words, when we integrate, we just end up with kq divided by r. Now, since there are two such charge distributions, again, q1 and q2, we're actually going to have two of these expressions. And we can mark them v1 and v2 as long as we make the charges also q1 and q2 respectively. Now, the total potential present at this point C is simply the algebraic sum of v1 and v2. Now, both of these terms have a factor of k over r, so let's factor that out. That leaves us with q1 plus q2 inside the parentheses. Now, the distance r is actually given to us as capital R. It's the radius of that circle, so we can make that substitution in here. Q1 would be the charge on this first charge distribution, which is given to us in the problem. So we'll make this capital Q1 right here. And then Q2 is given to us in the form of negative 6 times Q1. So we'll make a substitution here. Inside the parentheses, we can subtract the like terms. We have 1q1 minus 6q1, so we'll have negative 5q1. And then we can simply plug in the known values. k is a constant. It's 8.99 times 10 to the 9th. r is given to us in centimeters, so we'll multiply it by 10 to the minus 2 to convert it into meters. And then picocoulombs for q1 would be multiplied by 10 to the minus 12. So let's plug in those known values. And when we punch that into our calculators, we should get roughly negative 2.30 volts. And so this is the correct answer for the total electric potential present at point C here. Now part B of the question is very similar. We're calculating the total electric potential up here at point P. We just once again want to recognize that the distance from any point along these charge distributions is going to be the same. So the distance from here to that point is the same as the distance is to that point, which is the same as that, and so on. And because of that constant distance, when we go to calculate the potential, of this continuous charge distribution, we can once again factor out the r. So it's a very similar procedure. We have k over r times the integral of dq. As before, the integral of dq is just the total charge q. The only difference here really is that the distance r is no longer the radius of the circle. It's the distance from point p to the edge of this circular charge distribution. But if we clean up the diagram a little bit, we can see that that distance from point P to the edge of the circular charge distribution is just the hypotenuse of this right triangle here. So a little Pythagorean theorem would tell us that R squared plus D squared is equal to this distance squared that we're looking for, which we can just call C squared for now. And then when we take the square root of both sides, we can see, of course, that that distance is equal to the square root of R squared plus D squared. So this is the distance that we're going to be using, but otherwise it's a pretty similar question. We know that the total potential is going to equal v1 plus v2, which of course we can write as k multiplied by q1 divided by this distance of the square root of r squared plus d squared, and then the same thing over here with v2, k multiplied by q2 over that same distance. Let's factor out the k over the square root of r squared plus d squared. We'll then have q1 plus q2, but by the same argument as before, that's going to simplify to just negative 5q1. And then we'll plug in the known values. d was also given to us in centimeters, so we'll multiply that by 10 to the minus 2 to get it into meters. 
And when we crunch that one down, we should get approximately negative 1.78 volts. So this is the correct answer to part B. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please click the thumbs up and also subscribe so you can stay tuned for other videos. Remember that you can send in your own question to the email address on the screen and I'll do my best to post the answer to it on YouTube.